What's up everybody, this is Steve Sterlachi and today we are finally doing the comparison that people of my channel, viewers, have been asking for for a while. I am a known Helix user, I've been using it for the last five years or so, and over the past few months I've been doing a little experimenting, I've got a Quad Cortex, and I also have the Fractal FM9, which is going to be the main comparison for the day. We are going to be looking at the Helix versus the Fractal FM9, which one should you buy and which one is right for you. So despite being a Helix user for the past few years, um, there is no affiliation or anything, no sponsor in this video. This is just purely my opinion based on using the two of these pretty extensively. Obviously I have a lot more time on the Helix, but after spending a few weeks with the FM9, um, I've really learned my way around it. I've learned its quirks, its pluses and minuses, just like I know with the Helix. So I'm really looking forward to sharing with you the positives and negatives of both, and then hopefully help you make a decision on which one you would like to buy. I can definitely see this video getting really long, so I'm gonna to try to make my points brief. And if you guys want sound examples of this stuff, I mean, there's so many out there, there won't be sound examples in this. This is purely my opinion of my user experience, not a tonal comparison. So that being said, the first discussion will be on tone. I do think that there's like a whole stigma and opinion that the Fractal stuff automatically will sound better than the Helix stuff. And if you don't think so, then you're an idiot. That seems to be what you'll read online. And at first when I plugged in, I, I have them in front of me here. You can't see them, but I can. But this is the FM9, this is the Helix, if you're wondering why I'm looking in, in directions. When I first started using the FM9, I was thinking, wow, this is such good sound, great feel, really amazing. I dove into this thing, I used it for weeks and didn't use anything but this. Learned how to use it, ins, outs, and only played this. And when I went back to the Helix for a couple of shows, a couple of rehearsals, I was expecting to be disappointed where I was going to be like, oh, well, the Fractal's the real deal. The Helix is going to be, you know, it's not going to sound as good. And that wasn't the case. I was actually so pleasantly surprised going back to the Helix because I was expecting it to be lesser. And honestly, it's not. They're both just as good as each other, I think, sound-wise. I will say that the FM9 is easier to get usable tones in the sense that there's no harsh high-end frequencies that exist in the Helix world. It's really, it's, it's just an unfortunate part of the Helix that it has that there is a shrilly high-end thing that you, over time, learn how to deal with and get out. But I will say the FM9 does not have that issue. And there's also something in the low end that shows a little bit more clarity and a little bit better feel in the FM9, in my opinion. And of course, all of that goes out the window when you start listening to yourself in context. So I would listen to myself in rehearsals and I, we record all of our rehearsals direct through a Midas M32 console. And I would use Helix one week, FM9 another week, listening back, who cares? There's no real difference. Um, I wouldn't say one is better than the other in that context, but I will edge the fractal on a little bit better feeling and a little bit more realistic tones faster, if you will. Okay, let's talk about a few other things. The size and layouts of these units. When I first saw the FM9 announced, I was thinking nine foot switches, it's gonna be really small and it's gonna be a lot more portable than the Helix. And that's not the case. Um, the FM9 is big relative to the Helix. The Helix is obviously bigger. It's got more foot switches. It's got the expression pedal. And again, it's an older unit, so it's got a little bit, I guess, uh, older tech in it, which obviously is usually bigger. I was expecting the FM9 to almost be like the HX Stomp XL, where it was like this big, but as you can see, the FM9 compares pretty well in size to the Helix. When you take into account that the Helix has three more foot switches plus an expression pedal, I think that the size comparison, it's almost worse. I think the Helix is a better fit in the size because it's not that much bigger, but it has three more foot switches and an entire expression pedal. So obviously the FM9 is smaller, but is it that much, is that difference in size worth it when you look at the three extra foot switches and expression pedal? With both of these units, you know that one button press can do an infinite number of things and are really powerful. So having those three extra foot switches on the Helix plus an expression pedal for just barely a bigger unit, um, it's up to you. What do you think? Is that worth it or is it not? Let's talk about the layouts of the Helix. So the Helix has a few different options that you could do for your layout. And what I mean by layout, it means when you look at the floorboard, what do you see? What are your options? What can you step on? And with the Helix, we have options of four snapshots, four stomps, 
four presets, four stomps, four presets, four snaps, et cetera, et cetera. Any combination of those four and four, or when you hit the preset stomp button, it takes you to this blank 10 foot switch canvas. And on this canvas, you can do whatever you want. And you do this in what's called command center, where you can literally assign anything, any preset, any snapshot, stomp box, bypass, parameter control. Anything can be assigned to any one of the 10 foot switches. Out of the 12 total foot switches now, you also have two of these function switches, which is your preset stomp toggle. And you also have your tap tempo and your tuner. Those are not changeable. They're usable, like they're flexible and useful tools. So it's not like these are two useless buttons. They're just not assignable. Typically on the Helix, my setup is that I will go in eight snapshot mode almost exclusively, and then I will hit the preset stomp button where I can customize anything I want. If I have to jump to a specific preset, I can put that in here like you see here. And also, you know, button passes, multiple things, reverb swaps, and uh, different assignments all done in the command center. Layouts on the FM9 are super, super flexible. Um, very similar in that you can assign anything anywhere. You can do this roll where you press the two far switches on the right, and that takes you to your master layout. Master layout means that it's your layout of layouts. So you see on the floorboard all of the different possible layouts that you can jump to. Um, you could do channels on your amps. You can do presets, scenes, effects, a second page of effects, your looper, your per preset layout, and you also have a blank one for you to fully customize. You can also go into these and fully customize them yourself. I have a video on how to do that custom layout up here that I will show you. And this really makes banking to and from all of the different layouts really easy. This master layout's really useful when you get the hang of using it. Typically how I run the FM9, when I'm using this live, I run it in eight scene mode, which is I have all eight scenes visible on the board at all times. And I have a toggle here that takes me back and forth between my scenes and effects. And when I'm on the effects page, that's where I can get my tap tempo and tuner. I also have a tab that takes you to more effects. So you actually get more foot switches out of the FM9, despite it having less physical switches, you can jump to that effects, go to the more effects page and really maximize flexibility. On top of that, one thing that really sets the FM9 apart is that all of the foot switches that you have on here are assignable to two functions, meaning you have a press and a hold function. So when you press your regular button press, you can have whatever you want to happen, but also when you hold it, you can make another thing happen. So your nine foot switches quickly become 18, which it's, again, it's infinitely flexible. Both of these units are so infinitely flexible, you can spend a lifetime trying to maximize the potential of these and still have a long way to go. And another advantage to having the FM9 is that that tap tempo can be assigned anywhere. So you have, where you have the advantage on the Helix with the two function buttons that you can't change, you can actually put them wherever you want. If you don't want a tap tempo, a lot of people don't want a tap tempo or a tuner, and with the FM9, you don't have to have that. With the Helix, you do have to have that tap tempo. All right, so let's talk now about building presets. We're gonna split this into two sections. First, we're gonna talk about building in the software, which is the HX Edit and the FM9 Edit, and then we'll talk about building on the physical units. All right, so HX Edit here is really easy to understand. Let's go to something new here. When you open a fresh preset, so this is your first time making something, you have a guitar input, and you have your multi out. This is the same on everything. So you have this whole signal chain to work with and you can add whatever you want to there. You can also just very easily click on this and send this to the second path. And now you have both paths. So it's gonna go left to right up top, left to right on the bottom, and your multi is gonna be your outputs. So now to add stuff in here, you just need to click. You wanna throw amps in there. Boom, amp and cab already added. Just click around, your blocks are all right there in front of you, and you can bypass them, put them on, change all your settings. All the change settings are on sliders on the Helix, um, so there's no knobs, but you use these sliders. And now you can hear and see, this is something that's gonna make sense in a second. There's no gap when I'm bypassing this foot switch. That's something that's gonna, that was loud. That's something that's gonna make sense in a minute when we look at the FM9. So when we shift over to FM9 edit, if I go to a blank preset, you see that the grid is totally empty. And this is something that I don't understand why, but 
you could start wherever you want, but the grid is totally empty. So if you plug in, you'll have no audio passing. Whereas in the Helix, if you plug it in, you'll still at least hear yourself direct. But for the FM9, you actually have to add an input. So you set this to your input one where your guitar will be plugged into. And then you have to go over and manually add your output. And then you need to connect these with what uh, these are called shunts. So a shunt in layman's terms, it's basically the patch cable. That's what I think about it. So it's a blank block or the cable that connects the blocks. So now it's like, this is where I start in HX Edit, but I just had to do three steps. It's kind of a workflow killer if you're just throwing in a free, uh, throwing up a fresh preset. And now from here, things become very similar, or you can even go to Quick Build, and it looks a little bit like the Helix where you can um, click and drag into the blocks and say you want to throw some stuff around. What did we do? We did an amp over there. We did a cab. Say you want to throw your drive pedal up there. And you can just use this quick build to drag your rig together. So now something to compare here. You saw before that there was no delay when you changed the bypass state, the bypass state on the Helix. Now if you're on the FM9, you hear me pressing it and you see there's a little bit of a lag and a delay and sometimes that really screws me up when I'm trying to work quickly. I won't think that something happened, especially when I'm doing my scene changes. Um, actually, I'll go pull that up. I think you got the picture of what this looks like to build something from scratch. But if I go back to my main gigging preset, right, so I'm gonna go to scenes. Scenes are like snapshots, snapshots are like scenes. This is what changes a bunch of things all at once. This is your preset within your preset. So if I hit my rock solo scene, you see that there's a hesitation for all of the things to happen relative to when I click them. So it's a little bit laggier and it's a little bit, it, it seems glitchy, but it's just, it's laggy. It takes up more time. I do, however, like that you have the CPU usage up in the corner. That's really useful if you are building a heavy preset and you want to make sure that you're okay. Also, something else to note about the outputs here when you're setting up an output on the FM9, there's no multi out. And where a multi out comes in handy on the Helix is that the same output is gonna to go to all the quarter inch outputs and the XLR outputs, which is useful if you're using an FRFR speaker and you could just set your preset up, it goes out, but you can control where the big volume knob sends it. Uh, what the big volume knob controls, I typically send front of house or a solid signal that I don't touch, and then the volume control handles my quarter inch outputs. That all happens in a multi out, but on the fractal, you have to send a separate parallel path. You have to split your signal really into an even and separate output that's going to go to output two, which would then go to your FRFR and has a completely independent control, which is kind of cool. I like that you can control both. You have these separate volume knobs that can control both output one and output two, and even output three, if you so desire. So you have a little bit more flexibility with the output routing on the FM9. It's just easier to do it in the Helix. A huge plus for the FM9 edit software, when you go to your outputs, you have these meters down here, which tell you how hot your signal is. So when you're balancing presets, it makes life a whole lot easier because you have a decibel reading for your presets and for your scenes that you can make your presets consistent across your set list. You can make your scenes consistent across your presets. Helix did add meters, but they're not in the actual software anywhere, but they are on the unit, but there's no numbers. So you're kind of just eyeballing um, or I, you're just eyeballing a meter, which is, it's cool, but it's not as specific as the FM9s is. Next topic is gonna be onboard building. And in my opinion, this is where Helix completely kicks the FM9s, but building on the FM9 is, it's pretty difficult. As you saw, you have to start with the blank grid. So when you enter a blank preset, all you see is your scenes list. So now you have to actually press the big button and now again, you have that blank grid with nothing on it. 
And from here, you have to twist the big knob until you get to your input. Okay, I got my input. Now you can hold down enter and it'll make your shunt for you, take you all the way to the end. You rotate that until you get to your output. Hit enter. And now you have to navigate backwards back into this. And then again, you use the middle button to turn. So now I got my amp. Navigate over, whoops, nope, not navigate over. You have to also hit enter, get to the amp, hit enter, navigate over. Scroll till you get to cab, hit enter. And now to edit from here, you don't, you see on the, on the board, you don't have knobs. So you actually have to hit edit. And now this takes you to all of the amps. So if you want to pick your amp, you can just scroll through until you find the one you like. Let's keep that at the ODS clean for now. Then you're going to page over, you get your tone page, then you have your preamp section, then you start getting into the deeper menus of the FM9 and all the things that it's capable of. And you can see that that takes a little bit of time. Whereas on the Helix, when you want to put something, you press the big knob, you just scroll right down to amp and cab, you go to the right, this is a joystick that you're going to go side to side with, and you're going to scroll down to your amp. We got our fender right there, and now it's really easy to just add blocks this way. So I'm already on, say, a reverb. You can also just turn the knob and it takes you to favorites. So if you save your favorites, you could just turn to the right. And these are all favorites that I've saved over time for quick and easy access when you're building a preset. So you see on the Helix, not having to add the shunts and not having to add the input and the output really saves you a lot of time when you're building on the actual unit. So now let's talk about, we already built our preset. I'm gonna go over to some presets that I use, that same gigging preset on both. Okay, so now say I want to, I want to change an effect. So I'm gonna get into my effects layouts on both. If I want to, let's go work on the Helix first. So say I want to mess with my Air Apparent, which is your King of Tone pedal. All I have to do is use this touch capacitance switch, put my finger on it, and it brings up the menu right away. Brings me right to the pedal and it brings up all of the knobs underneath it to adjust the parameters. Again, if I wanna use the Diana Drive, I just tap it and I could just tap whichever effect I want to use or I want to adjust and it takes me right to that spot. If I wanna do this on the FM9, I have to hit the big button, enter that same grid view again. I have to hit the big knob, page over to the effect, until I get to it, hit edit. And now here you'll see it takes me to the type and then I page over to the basic, which is gonna give me my knobs. And when you page over to the basic, that'll give you the basic functions of it. But you can see now that once you make your changes, you hit home again, you're back there. Now again, the FM9 has a very creative and useful tool that really makes it pick up some ground and possibly even be faster than the Helix depending on what parameters you choose for this. So if you are on your main home screen and you page over to the right, you have what's called perform PP, which means performance page. And you also have perform global. Uh, perform PP means performance mode per preset. The other one is performance mode global. So this is a menu of 10 parameters that you can custom assign to be these knobs at the bottom. And all you do is press up and down to get to the different rows. So if you carefully select the parameters that would need adjusting the most, like high cuts or your delay reverb mix, all of those knobs can be assigned to this menu so that when you're gigging, this is like your gig view, you just have those readily available so you could just pop up and down and you can make your adjustments on the fly really easily. You can do this in a per preset manner, which means that anything in this given preset, you can assign 10 things, whatever you want, 10 parameters across the entire preset whether it's on your amp block, cab block, whatever effect you want, can all be assigned here. You can also page to your global, which is gonna be the same throughout every single preset. So every preset on here is gonna have, for example, an amp and a cabinet. So if you have your favorite amp settings that you like to adjust, your favorite cabinet settings you like to adjust, this is where you'd wanna put those because it's gonna be a global setting. All right, so on preset building, this is gonna get very confusing if you don't speak the fractal language, but Hopefully you can follow along. I'll do my best to explain this for a, uh, a layman's person that doesn't 
own or understand anything here. Not that you're not going to, but that you don't currently. On the Helix, it's completely open format where you can put anything anywhere. If you wanna stack 10 drives in a row, you can do that to your heart's desire until you run out of DSP. You can put as many of anything as you want, anywhere you want it. You can only use two amps, which I, it's plenty for one preset. And you can put them anywhere you want. You could run them in parallel. You could run them back in, uh, side by side and bypass one to get to the other. Or you can use them in a blendable fashion where you're blending two opposite sounds and creating your sound that way, whatever you want to think of. You can also do two amps in the FM9 and you have other block limitations. There is a whole list of the block limits on the Fractal website if you want to look at the blocks guide, I think it's called. But um, there's a lot to read in there. But basically, you are limited in how many blocks. So I'm going to show you in FM Edit again. So you see here you have three drive blocks. And by blocks, I mean a block that says drive because it's a lot more flexible than just one drive pedal. Within every block on the FM9, you have what are called channels. And channels means that you can completely change the type and settings of whatever it is that the block you have added is. The trade-off here is that you can't put more than three of these blocks. So if you wanna put a fuzz earlier in the chain and then have three overdrive distortion pedals that you stack into one another, you can't do that on the FM9. You are limited to the three drive pedals, but you can turn that quickly into 12 drive pedals by using your channels. So if you're not into stacking overdrives or stacking your drive pedals, throwing three drive blocks into the FM9 is the equivalent of having 12 on your pedal board. And on the Helix, again, you can just keep adding and adding until you run out of room. And now back to the amps, when you're on amps with the FM9, let's show you this quick build again, you'll see that you have two amp blocks. So I can put two amps in the Fractal and I can have Again, four channels of amps. So each channel can be its own separate amp with its own separate settings. And using the two amps, I can have eight amps in one preset. The trade-off here is that there's no seamless switching. So when you do change your channel on the amp, you cannot do that without a gap. So there will be a noticeable gap in audio. Honestly, it's not that bad. It's barely noticeable. It's very much similar to if you ch change channels on a real amp. It's hardly noticeable. You do it in the right place, no one will ever notice. Whereas on the Helix, realistically, you could just copy your preset into another uh, preset slot and just switch back and forth between the preset and have the same audio gap in either unit. So despite being able to have eight amps in one preset, I think it's a little bit redundant and not as useful um, if that makes sense, because I could just do the same thing in the Helix and just change presets and use the gaps. If you can't do it without the seamless switching, then I don't think that there's exactly a point to giving this up to the Fractal as far as a, if we're going for a point system. I'd call it a draw on the amp stuff. When you're changing channels on everything besides the amp block, and I'm 99% sure it's only the amp block that you can't do seamless channel changes in. So any other block in the FM9, you can change your channel seamlessly without any gap in audio, everything besides the amp block. So only the amp blocks have that gap in audio when you are changing channels. Well, my hair light died. <laughs> it's a new studio setup, so I'm still getting things right. But yeah, my, my background light died. Maybe that's a sign that I should shut up now and wrap this thing up. Um, I will do a brief ins and outs comparison because that's really the only other thing that's gonna separate these. I am a person who runs two full electric guitar rigs in my Helix. I tour with country artist Jessica Lynn, and I put her electric guitar and my electric guitar on completely independent paths in the Helix and send two separate signals to front of house. They completely do not cross with one another, but I have to go quarter inch out into a DI box for her signal, and I can go XLR straight to house with mine. On the FM9, I have the luxury of having two complete separate and stereo XLR outputs that I can send to front of house, which is really nice. Other than that, the comparisons are pretty similar. And the Helix also has a microphone input, which is really useful if you're a singer, if you wanna sing along, or if you wanna record acoustic guitar, or play acoustic guitar and mic it up. It's a great preamp, it sounds really good. FM9 does not have any XLR input. Also on tone, when we're talking about tone things, just before we run out, I'm gonna throw a couple more things at you. 
I will say that the drive pedals on the FM9 kind of stink. I will say that the drive pedals on the Helix are excellent, very good. I will say that the reverbs are mediocre on the Helix, just okay. The reverbs on the FM9 are absolutely fantastic and sound really, really great. I will call the delays even. There are, there are so many delay options. Um, amps, we already talked a little bit about amps. So the amps, I will say, sound a little bit better on the Fractal and you have a lot more options. You have, I think, like, like hundreds of options on the Fractal as far as amp goes, where you have dozens of options on the Helix, which I don't consider it a bad thing because I have option paralysis sometimes, so I don't mind having lesser to choose from. The cabinet section in the Fractal is seriously incredible. I much rather dial in my cabinets. You can edit IRs on here using their cabinet section, which is really, really nice. If you look at what you could do on the cabinet, you have four pages of parameters that you can um, dial things in on. Which is really, really great compared to the Helix where you literally just have um, an IR block. You can control high cuts and low cuts. And that's pretty much it. And then overall with the amps, you have regular parameters on the Helix, bare bones, necessities, things that you need, and things that some, a few advanced things. Nothing crazy. Whereas on the FM9, you have, not only do you have what's actually on the amp, where you have all different, you know, parameters that you would typically see, you also have an ideal page where Fractal adds what would happen in an ideal world. If in an ideal world, these are the settings that you would have. You'd have all these options. You also have a specific preamp section where you can do things like put an input boost on. You can select the type where you can basically put a distortion pedal or an overdrive pedal in this section. You can change your power amp. You can change your tubes. You can change your power supply, your speaker impedance curve, your input EQ, your output EQ, and you can work on your dynamics with your output compressor it gets a little bit crazy how much you can do with the amps and the FM9, super, super powerful. If you're into really fine tuning your sound, then you'll love diving into these menus. For me, I want something that sounds good fast, which they are both fully capable of. So which one will I be using more? And I honestly, I don't have an answer. The, these two are the closest competitors in my world right now, and I enjoy using both of them very much. They're both, they both have challenges, they both have pluses, they both have minuses like we just talked about. So they both have places in my heart and in my rig. I love using my Helix. Helix, I think, is still an overall better touring solution. I know it's gonna work. Uh, if it goes down, I don't have to worry about getting another one because they're readily available. FM9s are backed up for months at this point. So the Helix being so easy to adjust on the fly and having the options that I discussed with the command center being all over, having the expression pedal. I would say that I prefer touring with the Helix, but that could change as I get more and more used to the FM9 because it's really surprised me and I'm really enjoying using it. But yeah, again, thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, very much appreciate it. And um, let me know what you wanna see from these in the future and I'll do my best to get a video together for them. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.